To calculate the exponential moving average for a regular interval, for example, let's say every one second we calculate the exponential moving average. The first exponential moving average, we set it to the price at time t equals zero. And for all times after that, we calculate the exponential moving average by multiplying the price at time t by some constant alpha and then adding it with 1 minus alpha times the previous exponential moving average, where alpha is between 0 and 1. When we expand this exponential moving average, it turns out to look like this. The previous prices are multiplied by a power of 1 minus a. For example, here it is multiplied by 1 minus a. The price before that is multiplied by 1 minus a raised to the power of 2. And the one before that will be multiplied by 1 minus a raised to the power of 3, and so on, all the way to the first price that we started taking the moving average. Again, this is the calculation for moving average for a regular interval, for example, every one second. But how do we take an exponential moving average for an irregular interval? For example, let's say that the price of a stock goes up and down, up and down, and up and down. And we want to take the moving average at t0, at t1, at t2, and at some point tn. Now notice that the intervals between t0 and t1 and between t1 and t2 are not the same. These are irregular intervals. And this will be the same for between t2 and t3, t3 and t4, and so on, all the way up to tn. The intervals between each time t0, t1, t2, all the way up to tn might not be the same. For example, the interval between t0 and t1 might be 1 second, however the interval between t1 and t2 might be 5 seconds. For our irregular interval, how will we calculate the moving average? We will define m star t to be equal to the moving average with irregular intervals at time t. The first moving average is easy to compute. m star of t0, we set it to the price at t0. Similar to how we calculated the moving average for regular intervals, for the irregular interval, the moving average m star at time t of i, we set it equal to some number alpha of t of i times the price at t of i plus 1 minus alpha to the t of i multiplied by the previous exponential moving average for an irregular interval m star of t of i minus 1. Again, this alpha of t of i will be between 0 and 1. The alpha that we saw for the regular interval, it was a constant. However, here, alpha of t of i will depend on the time interval. It will depend on the time interval between the last time we measure the exponential moving average and the current time where we are taking the exponential moving average. For example, alpha of t of i between t0 and t1 will be different from alpha of t of i between t1 and t2. I'll explain how this alpha of t of i is defined later in the video. For now, I'm going to show you when we expand this equation, it looks similar to the equation for the regular intervals. So what I'm going to do is first copy this and we're going to expand the previous exponential moving average m star of t of i minus 1. So what is m star of t of i minus 1? Well, we can apply the same definition except for m of t of i minus 1. So this will become m star of t of i minus 1. Likewise over here, alpha of t of i minus 1. The price will be the previous price, p of t of i minus 1 plus this will be alpha of t of i minus 1 and the previous exponential moving average of m star of t of i minus 1 will be m star of t of i minus 2. So that is the equation for m star of t of i minus 1 and we're going to replace this over here with this equation. So what's going to happen is we're going to multiply 1 minus alpha of t of i minus 1 with this equation. So this becomes we multiply the first part plus we multiply the second part also by 1 minus alpha of t of i. And this will be the equation for the exponential moving average when we expanded m star of t of i minus 1. And we can repeat the same process of expanding the previous exponential moving average. And when you expand everything out, you'll get an equation that looks like this. All of the terms will be multiplied by some form of 1 minus alpha of t of i. For example, let's take a look at the last two entries of this exponential moving average. The one before the last will be multiplied by 1 minus alpha of t of i times 1 minus alpha of t of i minus 1 all the way down to 1 minus alpha of t of 2. 
And the last term, again, will be multiplied by 1 minus alpha t of i times 1 minus alpha t of i minus 1, all the way down to 1 minus alpha of t of 1. And then multiply by the price at t0. What we're seeing here is that as the price is further back in history, that price is being multiplied by more terms of 1 minus alpha of t of i's. This is similar to what we observed for the regular interval, if I scroll up where the older prices were multiplied by a higher price of 1 minus alpha. And we can see a similar thing happening here. As the price gets older, it is multiplied by more terms of 1 minus alpha t of i. And each of these alpha t of i's vary depending on the time interval between when this exponential moving average was updated. Also note that for this equation, if all of the time intervals are the same, for example, all of the time intervals are one second, then all of these alpha of t of i's will be saying, in other words, they will be a constant, and this equation will look exactly like this equation for the regular interval. Earlier, I mentioned that these alpha of t of i should depend on the time interval between when the last exponential moving average was updated. But how should we pick this alpha of t of i's? What we're going to do is we're going to pick alpha of t of i so that it decays exponentially. We also want to pick this alpha t of i so that when the time between the last time we calculated the exponential moving average and the current time that we update the exponential moving average are small, for example, let's say that the time difference is really close to zero, then what we want is that the current exponential moving average should be close to the previous exponential moving average. On the other hand, let's say that there's a really long time between the last exponential moving average and the current exponential moving average that we're going to be calculating. The time difference is large. In that case, we want the exponential moving average to be close to the current price. So those are the two properties that we will keep in mind when we're picking this alpha of t of i. The first property that we discussed is that we want to pick alpha of t of i such that 1 minus alpha of t of i exponentially decays between the two time intervals, previous time t of i minus 1 and the current time t of i, and we'll define dt of i to be this time difference between the current time and the previous time we took the exponential moving average. Now why did I say 1 minus alpha of t of i here? You'll see later that by defining it this way, we'll have the property that when dt of i is close to zero, the current exponential moving average will be close to the previous exponential moving average. And when dt of i is really large, then the exponential moving average will be close to the current price. Let's take a look at how we want this alpha t of i to exponentially decay. We'll pick alpha t of i so that 1 minus alpha t of i decays exponentially. When the time interval between the previous exponential moving average and the current exponential moving average is equal to 0, we'll set 1 minus alpha t of i to be equal to 1. In other words, alpha t of i is equal to 0. Let's say that after some fixed interval h, we want this 1 minus alpha t of i to be equal to 0 0.5 and after another time h has elapsed in other words the time will now be 2h we want this 1 minus alpha t of i to be half the value of the previous value the previous value was 0 0.5 and at 2h we want this value to be half of that so that will be 0 0.25 and then after another time step of h we want 1 minus alpha t of i to be half of the previous which will be 0 0.25 divided by 2, so this will be 0 0.125. And after another time step h, we want the value to be half of what the value was at 3h. In other words, 1 minus alpha t of i has the value every h seconds. So we can define 1 minus alpha t of i to be equal to 0 0.5 raised to the power of dti divided by h. And you can see here that every time dti is equal to some multiple of h, we'll be multiplying 0 0.5 by some power. For example, when dt of i is equal to h, h divided by h is 1. So 1 minus alpha of t of i will be equal to 0 0.5 raised to the power of 1, which is equal to 0 0.5. When dt of i is equal to 2h, 2h divided by h will be equal to 2. So that will be 0 0.5 raised to the power of 2, which will be equal to 1 fourth. We can rewrite this with base e, and this will be equal to e raised to the natural log of 0 0.5 multiplied by dti divided by h. So this will be the equation that we're going to be using to pick alpha of t of i.
So earlier I mentioned that when dt of i is close to zero, we wanted the current exponential moving average to be close to the previous exponential moving average. And when dti was really large, we wanted the current exponential moving average to be close to the current price. Let's see if that property holds when we define 1 minus alpha t of i to be equal to this equation. So when dt of i is a small number, when it is close to zero, so this part dt of i will be close to zero, e raised to some power that is close to zero, for example, let's say zero. So this number over here will be close to one. In other words, one minus alpha t of i will be close to one. So one minus alpha t of i will be close to one. And this means that alpha t of i must be close to zero. So if we scroll back up, if alpha t of i is close to zero, and this part will be close to one, then we have the property that the current exponential moving average will be close to the previous exponential moving average. So when one minus alpha t of i is close to one, then the current exponential moving average will be close to the previous exponential moving average. Likewise, when dt of i is a really large number, then let's plug this dt of i inside here dt of i multiplied by h will be a really large number. However, the natural log of 0 0.5 will be negative. So here what we're doing is multiplying e by some large negative number. So this means that this whole thing will be close to 0. 1 minus alpha t of i will be close to 0. So again, going back to our exponential moving average, 1 minus alpha t of i will be close to 0. This means that alpha t of i will be close to 1. So the current exponential moving average will be close to some number that is close to 1 multiplied by the current price plus some number that is close to 0 multiplied by the previous exponential moving average. So this whole thing will be close to the current price. When the time interval between the previous exponential moving average and the current exponential moving average, this will be dt of i, is really large, then 1 minus alpha t of i will be close to 0. So the current exponential moving average will be close to the current price. So there you have it. We picked alpha t of i so that it decays exponentially, and when the time interval is close to 0, then the previous exponential moving average is close to the current exponential moving average. And when the time interval is large, the current exponential moving average is close to the current price. But why did we say that this 1 minus alpha t of i should exponentially decay? Why didn't we choose 1 minus alpha t of i so that it decays linearly? Or we could have picked 1 minus alpha t of i so that it will be equal to 1 until some time interval and then just drop off to zero. Why did we pick 1 minus alpha t of i to exponentially decay? Well, we picked exponential decay because it comes with some nice mathematical property. Path independent decay rate. What this means is that the moving average m star t of i decays at the same rate independent of the number of updates in an interval. Given some time interval, whether you take an exponential moving average twice or 10 times, the oldest exponential moving average will decay at the same rate. Let's take a look at an example. Again, we have a price of a stock going up and down, up and down. And in the first case, let's say we'll take the exponential moving average at t0 and then later at t2. And then in case two, we'll take the exponential moving at t0, t1, and t2. After we take the two exponential moving average, we'll compare the oldest exponential moving average and the decay rate of that exponential moving average. You'll see that the decay rate of the oldest exponential moving average will be the same whether you update the exponential moving average at t0, t1, and t2, or at t0, and then at t2. So for the first case, we'll take the exponential moving average at t equals t0, and then later at t equals t2. So the exponential moving average at t2, we'll just apply the equation and we get this equation. Where this 1 minus alpha t tick of 2, we simply apply this equation over here, and the time intervals will be t0 and t2. So this will be the decay rate of the oldest exponential moving average, m star t0. Now let's compute the exponential moving average for case 2. For case 2, again, we'll start with the definition. 
And then we get this for the exponential moving average at time t2. Let's expand the exponential moving average at t1. Again for case 2, we're updating the exponential moving average at t0, t1, and then t2. So that is why you see exponential moving average at t1. If we expand this equation, we'll get this equation. All I did was expanded this term and then multiply the terms by 1 minus alpha t of 2. And let's compute the decay rate for m star of t0. So this term, what is 1 minus alpha t of 2 times 1 minus alpha t of 1? Well, 1 minus alpha t of 2 will be equal to e raised to the natural log of 0 0.5 multiplied by the interval t2 minus t1 divided by h. And likewise, 1 minus alpha t of 1 will be equal to e raised to the natural log of 0 0.5 multiplied by the time intervals t1 minus t0 divided by h. For exponents having the same base, we can take the powers and then simply add them. And we get that this will be equal to e raised to the natural log of 0 0.5 multiplied by these terms and then adding these terms up. Notice that we have a minus t1 over here and a plus t1 over here. And these two terms cancel out. And what we're left with is we are left with e raised to the natural log of 0 0.5 multiplied by t2 minus t0 divided by h. So this will be the decay rate for 1 minus alpha t2 multiplied by 1 minus alpha of t1. And let's compare the decay rate that we computed here and the decay rate that we computed for case 1. You can see that these two, this one over here, and this one over here are the same. So what we saw was that between the time interval t0 and t2, whether we updated the exponential moving average once after t0, so this will be at t2, or whether we updated it twice, t1 and then later at t2, the decay rate on the oldest exponential moving average, m star t0, is the same. This number over here. So in this video, I showed you how to calculate the exponential moving average for an irregular interval, and you will use this equation over here. Now for irregular intervals, we had to pick alpha of t of i that varies with the interval. And how we pick this alpha of t of i is we said that 1 minus alpha of t of i should exponentially decay, and we came up with this equation. The reason why we said that this 1 minus alpha t of i should decay exponentially is that because the exponential moving average will decay at the same rate in a given interval independent of the number of updates. 